Well, for some of you, you'll know that uh, this name uh, rings a bell, James Carville. James Carville, who is a rather bombastic political advisor and commentator, uh, gave this pointed advice to his political party candidates way back in the day. He said, it's the economy, stupid. And so then candidate Bill Clinton uh, ran with that advice, and he told people, I feel your pain. Does anybody remember that? It's the economy. He felt the pain of middle class families. Now, in case you didn't know, there's a general election going on. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, if you have not registered to vote, please do so. Uh, but this weekend, some really good football was interrupted with some really annoying political ads. And most of those ads were middle class families gathered around the table with bills in one hand and then their other hand just on their forehead, worried about the future and the economy. Nothing gets you on your knees in prayer or to the ballot box like an insufficient paycheck. That's what we're reminded all the time. Jesus gave his disciples in this past, we've been studying the Lord's Prayer, and we're almost uh, at the end of this study. But we're, we're studying the Lord's Prayer because we want to pray well. We want to pray uh, sincerely. And, and in conversation with God, which is what prayer is, we want to be talking about the things that not only he cares about, but Jesus says that our Father in heaven knows that we need things. And so when we pray to him, there are ways that we can ask him specifically. Uh, and that's what Jesus does here. This new pattern was given to us by Jesus because, as Matthew, Matthew Henry points out, that uh, Jesus realized and saw that so many corruptions had crept into the duty of prayer among uh, the Jewish people that Christ saw that it was needful for a new pattern of prayer to be given. You can tell this because in what I just read, Jesus points to ways to pray not to do. He says, don't do it this way because what's been modeled for you is faulty. The new pattern of prayer starts by addressing God as our Father, which was an, of itself a mind-blowing concept to those who first heard Jesus. You did not pray to a Father, you prayed to Yahweh, and, you know, the priests prayed, and there were daily prayers, there were food prayers, there were lots of prayers, but it was never to the Father directly, and so Jesus kind of opens up this new uh, teaching about his disciples praying to a Father, recognizing that our Father in heaven is sovereign over all things. That, that what, that's what that means, our Father in heaven. Your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Last week, Ricky finished up the first three petitions. Those are petitions that we start out in prayer before we even get to what we need. We, we just put God in his place, that he is our Father. He is in heaven. His name is holy, and we want his kingdom to come, and we want his will to be done. And Ricky unpacked for us last week by focusing on the Lord's will, and he highlighted that God's will reorients our love for both God and people. And when we're asking ourselves, what is the will of God, the answer is that God's will is anything he wants to happen. Uh, he explained for us the difference between God's will of decree, God's will of desire, and God's will of direction. And in, in doing so, what Ricky showed us is that God's will of direction his general will is that the direction of our lives would be towards Christ-likeness, that we would not be living for ourselves, but we would be living for Christ and then living in God's love for other people. God's love for people is what sent Jesus to us. God sent his son, his only son, and Jesus cares about people. And so when we pray, because God loves people and because uh, Jesus calls us to do as he does, we also pray for people. And so this morning, we're going to look at just these next few words that Jesus teaches us to pray. Uh, very simple sentence. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. And you are smart people. And so I'm not, it's not that hard to understand what that means. Give us today our daily bread. But we are going to take a few moments and we're going to unpack, you know, what is it that we're actually asking? What are we asking God when we say, give us today our daily bread? What's behind that? Because that is a dense sentence, believe it or not, that we can pray more uh, about things that are uh, potentially connected to not only our provision, but the provision for other people as well. What do we learn about ourselves and about God 
our Father in this particular request. And so there's four things I think we learn when we repeat this prayer. I've learned a lot in repeating this prayer over and over again. Four things. One, that a disciple of Jesus is learning daily dependence. Give us today our daily bread is about learning daily dependence. The second thing is that a disciple of Jesus is learning contentment. That when we pray this, we learn to be content. Third, that a disciple of Jesus is learning to enjoy the gifts of God. That when we pray these things, we know that we have good gifts, and so we're learning how to enjoy them. And hopefully I'll show you that in just a moment. And then finally, when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are learning humility. So first, a little bit about learning daily dependence. Uh, like I said just a moment ago, nothing gets you on your knees like a, uh, a short paycheck. My wife and I, uh, Danae, were on staff with a campus ministry called Campus Crusade for Christ. It's now called Crew. And uh, one year while we were on staff, and I've shared this story uh, one time or, or two because it's such a significant point in my life. I was sitting at Panera Bread, and uh, it, which is actually as I was writing my notes, I'm like, boy, this, is, this, is, uh, this connection here is uncanny. It's like I was in Panera Bread, and I was, I was going through my emails, and I got that email that all of us love to see on the 15th and the 30th of every month. It's payday. Yay. So I opened up my email that was uh, supposed to communicate to me, hey, you got paid. This particular day, however, I did not get paid. In fact, I was getting paid $0, and I had $0 to draw from. In fact, there was less money in my account, and I had to pay them back before I got paid any more money. Now, being a young father of three kids, nothing stresses you out more like not having any money. Can I get an amen? If you don't have any money, you get a little stressed, right? I mean, come on. This is, this is life. God knows it. And so I started praying, our Father, my Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I was asking the Lord to provide. This prayer expresses a dependence upon God for our daily bread. And it's not just bread, uh, you know, as in, you know, a warm roll coming out of the oven that you, you eat and satisfy your hungry. It, it is that. It is that. But it is, it is more about our dependence and our reality of being creatures. We are created to be dependent upon something outside of ourselves. And primarily that something is God. God has... God has made it so that we are reminded over and over again that we are not an entity unto ourselves. We are created beings. And so this prayer teaches us to be dependent upon the God who created us, that, that we might be satisfied with his provision. Look at that first word. It says give, which means that it's a gift Give us. We are automatically put before the Lord, and we say, Lord, give us this day what we need. And notice our field, our field of vision here. This, the translation in the Greek, not everybody is quite certain. This is this uh, particular passage and one other passage in Luke 11. Uh, there's a word here that's used. This word today is either give us bread today or give us bread ongoing today or even give us continually tomorrow our bread. It is a, a word that is communicating the fact that there's an ongoing need. We, we need daily bread today. And this isn't the first time that, that God has taught his people this. In Exodus chapter 16, if you're new to Christianity, you might, you might at least know the story of the Israelites being rescued out of Egypt, which, by the way, I know now that uh, Prince of Egypt is DreamWorks, not Disney. Thank you, thank you for those corrections. I appreciate it. I always love to hear uh, when I, I quote something wrong. It's, it's, in, it's, it's, a, it's a gift to me. I really do believe that. Uh, the Israelites were rescued out of Egypt, and they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, and God provided for them what was called manna. Now, when I was a kid, I, I was distinctly remember in kindergarten, uh, my mom sending me to school with, uh, we had to provide snacks, and at that time, I went to a Christian pre-K, kindergarten, elementary school, and uh, I remember bringing banana manna bread to school to share, and it was like, does anybody like banana bread? 
Banana bread is really good. Bananas, not so much. But banana bread, if you put enough chocolate chips in that bad boy and some butter, banana bread is delicious. Well, I remember taking banana mana bread to school, and it was a, it was a picture of the need for bread in the wilderness because the Israelites needed manna. In fact, in Exodus chapter 16, God explains, if you want to turn there, I think it, the passage is up here, but Exodus 16, sometimes it's just good to turn in your Bible because then you can like note it and just turn back to it real quickly so that when you leave this place and you forget what the screen said, you could turn to your physical Bible and see it right there. The Lord said to Moses, Exodus chapter 16, verse 4, the Lord tells Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you. And the people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. All of the Jews listening to Jesus would have immediately been like, dude, that's what he's talking about. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus is making a connection to something historical that happened in their lives so that they would immediately know like, yeah, this is nothing new. God made us collect as a people bread that was just enough for that day. And why does God do that? Well, he says, this way I will test them to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. Whether or not they really believe that God was who he said he was. And if you skim down to verses 16 through 19, uh, Moses says, this is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each person needs to eat. You can take two quarts per individual according to the number of people each of you has in his tent. And just like every other human, these people had trouble trusting God. So they didn't just collect uh, the two quarts that they were instructed. Some of them would be like, well, I'm just going to give a little, I'm going to put a little extra in here because maybe God won't show up. But the extra would always rot. So they would collect extra and, and they would see it rot. And God would say, how much are you going to keep not trusting me? Just collect the two quarts and then you'll get enough. You'll be full. And so eventually they did learn that, and they, they learned that they were desperately dependent on God every single day for this bread. When we ask for bread, when we are asking, give us this day our daily bread, what we are asking God is to give us the opportunity to trust him and to see him provide for our necessary needs. We need bread. We are physical creatures. We need food to, to, to live Photosynthesis is an amazing thing. Are there any biology? Are there, you know what photosynthesis is? Am I bringing up a word from the past? Plants get food from light. That's an incredible thing. Wouldn't you like to just get food from light? No, because you don't get to taste banana bread. God has created good things for us to taste and eat. I don't want to be a plant where I just get food from light. We need food, and there's a reason for that. We are creatures in need of provision. God has created us to be dependent on him. So when we as disciples are praying, give us this day our daily bread, we, we, we take a moment and what we're doing is we're praying and say, okay, first of all, I am dependent. Give us. Father, give, give us food. I'm dependent upon you. I need food. I'm hungry. And Martin Luther even said that this, this bread could be also a symbol for everything necessary for the preservation of life. So when we think of give us this day our daily bread, if our need for food has been satisfied, then we can also pray for things like, Lord, we, we need a vocation. We need the means by which we could buy food. And we could probably keep adding on to the things that help us to have bread and then lead down the road of prayer where we're, we're praying for other people. We're praying for our nation. We're praying uh, for our neighbor. We're praying for our family. We're praying for the things that... Uh, would help others to know that God is faithful in providing. Give us this day our daily bread. I got a zero dollar paycheck, and immediately I reached out I, to today. I was like, "Hey, you're not gonna. You're not, I, I forget exactly what the chain of events was, but I said, "God, like, okay, this is a great opportunity for you. Have been faithful to provide for us so many things. I highly doubt you're gonna let me down." And so one of the ways in which I prayed was like, God, I, and we were used to doing was depending on other people for the needs that were going to be met. And we were responsible for our salary, and we just reached out to our team of uh, ministry partners and shared with them our need for bread. Literally and figuratively. We need some bread. We need some dough. We need some cash. 
and they graciously responded, and God, through them, provided for us. And we were dependent. It's nothing I did on my own. It was simply God meeting a need. Friends, what is it that you have been too dependent upon yourself for, and you have just been unable to meet a need? There's something in your life. I have it in my life. There's, there's something where, like, God, you're taking care of this, but I don't think you're going to take care of this. And so I'll, I'll just take a step, and I'll, I'll do this. Where do you need to trust the Lord? When you say, give us this day our daily bread, where do you need to say, Lord, I've not been, I've not been dependent upon you for this. And it, in my own way, things have just not worked out. Would you provide for this? That is, that is a disciple learning daily dependence. Trusting God one day at a time leads us to faith in God for a lifetime. I could go on about how many times God has provided for me over and over and over and over again, whether it's our finances, whether it's for things that we were wanting to see in our family's lives, whether it was for our marriage relationship, whether it was for our friends, whether it was for this church. God has provided over and over and over again. And you know what? When we grow in our faith believing in the unseen, what, what happens is we grow stronger to believe that the, the thing that we most necessarily need to believe is that Jesus really was dead and rose from the grave. If you read the entire New Testament, the faith that we have, the strength that we're, that we're drawing from that faith, we have to hold on to the promise that Christ was resurrected, that he is ascended, and that we too will one day rise from the dead. And if we hold on to that, then we know that our eyes will see that very promise fulfilled. The way that we grow in that strength is the tiny little ways that we trust God for today. Today, Sunday, is, is a day for you to trust that God will meet all of your needs and you're dependent on him today. Number two, a disciple of Jesus, when we pray this, give us today our daily bread, we are learning about contentment about being content with the necessary. Because when we are content with the necessary, when we begin to reflect, say, hey, God, you have provided everything that is necessary for us. We're not right now scrambling for food. We, we've all come here. We probably have food in our bellies. And by God's kindness, we have coffee in our veins right now, some of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coffee and food. None of us are scrambling for food right now. So there's a, a level of necessary, and we're all clothed. It's good to see that you're all clothed. I'm grateful that you are clothed, and you should be grateful that I am clothed as well. You got here in a car. Our needs have been necessarily met. Everything else beyond this is a bonus. God often and generally gives us far more enough for the day. Even in the midst of great plenty, which sometimes gets swept away in an instant, our real safety lies in the Father alone. Give us this day our daily bread provides us an opportunity not only to learn about dependence upon him, but to be content with what he has given to us. That our contentment is not in the fact that we have uh, an accumulation of, of things that we need, but our Contentment is rooted in the fact that I am content knowing that my Father is providing for me. And what happens is, is that Jesus is, you know, kind of helping us to think about uh, a disciple's struggle with greed and worry. Jesus says, don't be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow has enough worries of its own. You know, he, what is it that a man would gain the whole world but lose his soul? Give us this day our daily bread is, is, is a means by which Jesus says there is so much packed into this that your greed is not going to help you. Your anxiety and your worry is not going to solve anything. You can be content knowing that, that my father, your father, provides for you. And what happens when we are content? When we are content with the necessary, guess what that leads us to? It leads us to generosity. Because if I have what I need, then everything else is a bonus. Then I'm able to let go of things a little bit more easy. For instance, if I've got four cars, which I don't, 
But if I did have four cars, and I just had one car sitting in the yard and it was workable, and one of you had a need, like let's say you wrecked a car, or one of you teenagers wrecked a car, and you didn't have enough money, and you needed it to go to work so that you could provide food for your family, guess what I would be able to do? If I wasn't so dependent on that, if I wasn't so greedy, I could say, here's my car, take it, use it as long as you want. You could be generous. You can share a little extra cash. You can share a little extra food. You can give a little extra clothes. This is what happens when we are content. In fact, Psalm 37, 25, men, this is one of our coordinates, right? We talk about the coordinates of men's ministry, the various areas in life that we want to be targeted in, and one of them is generosity. Psalm 37, 25 through 26, the psalmist says, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous abandoned or his children begging for bread. He's content. He is dependent upon God. God has provided for him, and he's been faithful to steward that gift to provide for his family. And then what does this man do? He's generous. He's always generous, always lending, and his children are a blessing. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. And Jesus says, again, don't worry about tomorrow. Keep your heart fixed on God for today. Walk in real time with him for today. Be content with what God has given you today. Give us today our daily bread. One commentator noted that when you use this in the morning, this petition is asking for food for that day. That's just the beginning. So if you pray this at the beginning of the day and you have not eaten yet, you are thinking about, God, provide for me today. And then when you do eat at the end of the day, you can give thanks for God's provision. Uh, if you're at the end of the day and you're praying this prayer, you're thanking him, you're looking back. I have been walking with Ranger, uh, my dog, who's a, a year and, I don't know, some change, and I've been repeating the Lord's Prayer over and over again. And it dawned on me that as I would walk with him and I'd work through the Lord's Prayer, I'd say, I'd have to start saying, Lord, you know, give us today our daily bread. I'm like, man, you have already provided for me. I've eaten my little Belvita pack. I have Belvita, you know, protein crackers. I've had my coffee. And then I think to myself, I was like, man, I've already eaten, and I'm not really worried about going home and not finding anything in the pantry or the fridge. God, you have, you have faithfully provided for me abundance. I'm not going to go hungry. I'm not worried about that. So, so thank you. You are providing for me already. You have abundantly provided for me. God, and then I begin to think, where do, where do we begin to think? God, you, this is not everybody's circumstance. And I begin to think about people about places where there isn't enough food. And I ask God that he might do the work through the church and that he might give even us opportunity to be generous to provide the daily bread that others need. And this is what connects us, that connects us to everybody else is that you know, I can identify with being hungry and I'm grateful for, for, for all that God has provided. And it, it is a necessary prayer for me to remember that, okay, you have given me over and over and over and over my daily bread. In fact, when I pray at night with my middle son, Jesse, uh, we pray the same thing uh, over and over again. We thank him for the day. We thank him for the home that we live in. We thank him for the bed. We thank him for the food that we eat. We just thank him over and over again. And again, at, my prayers are pretty repetitive. I'm like, all right, Jesse, let's do it again. Let's say, God, you have, you have done it. You, Lord, you provided us again. We're here. We're safe. We're in this home. It, over and over again, I think it's just, you know, like the Christian life, you'll hear me say, sometimes gets familiar. You get just get familiar to life. Have you ever walked into your home and be like, holy smack, I have a house. Like, I have clothes. Like, you just take, you take for granted the things that are just routine in our lives. And it's okay. God gives us good gifts we're dependent on him for those gifts, and he has provided for us. And lest you think that God hasn't provided for the world, you know, the world's food and hunger needs are not a problem of capacity. The, the, the earth has enough capacity to grow enough food for everybody. Far, you could grow, how many of you have gardens? How many of you have gardens? Do you have gardens in your backyard? Do you know what I'm talking about, like tomatoes? Some people bring in tomatoes by the, it's like, stop bringing tomatoes. I don't want any more of your tomatoes. Right about now, there's more pumpkins than we can handle, right? Like, we're going to start seeing people throw pumpkins at signs, and you're going to see smashed pumpkins because there's just too many pumpkins. 
at the, the front end of the harvest season, everybody's buying pumpkins. At the back end, they're like, oh my gosh, here, take all these pumpkins. I don't want them anymore. The world has enough capacity. What do you think is the problem? It's men's hearts. Scarcity in the lives of people who are starving is not because God has not provided us with the ground to grow food in. It's because men are wicked and sinful and they're greedy. And they, they keep food from people to, to keep power. They, they have their own agenda. And so if you solve the heart issue, then you solve the hunger issue. But that heart issue is never going to be resolved unless you bend the knee to Jesus Christ. And you say to your Father in heaven, your name be holy, not mine. Your kingdom come, not mine. It's his kingdom. And God wants us to, as a church, be representatives, ambassadors, Paul says, of that kingdom. And so we are not only to be a dependent people on God, but we are to be a content and generous people. Where could you be more generous? Because you can. We all can. I can be more generous. I'm, I'm struck by the way in which the Holy Spirit has continually brought me back to like, hey, Tom, you, you, you have enough. What are some ways that you could be a bit more disciplined in this particular area so that you could be more generous in this area? Where can you be more generous? Because wh where do you need to be more content? Where do you need to do some due diligence and get your finances together and maybe be a little bit more disciplined? Maybe even have a budget. Dare I say budget? Because you have the opportunity to be generous. Three, as we pray this, we are learning to enjoy the good gifts of God. You know, Jesus makes it very clear that there's nothing that makes us unclean. So when we, uh, when we eat something, it's not, that's not what makes us unclean. There's nothing in Scripture that says you can't eat this or drink that or do this. It, it, Paul says that we are free to enjoy the good gifts of God. And so when we pray this prayer and we think about all of the good things that God has provided, in many ways we can, we can move to like, Lord, God, you've given us good gifts. I love, I love pumpkin bread. Uh, men's breakfast, we'll have a good time of, of food and fellowship together. We're, we're, we're moving towards Thanksgiving. And that other holiday that comes right after Thanksgiving, but I'm not going to say it right now. Good, good food. We gather around the table and we enjoy good food, and God has given us these things. And so we know that, that God is good, and he commands us. He's like to enjoy it, not to make it an idol, but to enjoy it because it is a good gift. So when we pray, give us today our daily bread, we are we are able to give thanks to the good things that he's, he's provided for us. And finally, a disciple of Jesus is learning humility when we pray this, rich or poor. Humility. Well, how, how are we learning humility in this? Well, again, it's connected to our dependence. When we have to ask God to give us this day our daily bread, we are posturing ourselves in such a way that, Lord, I need you to provide this for me. And when I am thinking about his provision, then I'm thanking him for the ways in which he has abundantly provided for us. And so as you move this progression of being dependent upon him and being content with what he's given and then learning to enjoy, you know what happens is it, it, the things that you have uh, are all the sweeter because you know that it's a gift. And that should lead you to a posture of humility. Those who are not as wealthy... Those who have a need, some of you have needs, but you're too afraid to share it. I hear it all the time. Somebody's like, I find out at the end of a long season, and I hear people like, yeah, we, we, just, we just didn't we just want to say anything. I'm like, why wouldn't you want to say anything? And I would argue because it's a pride thing. Because none of us wants to share like, hey, actually, I've screwed up my finances, and I am, I'm really stuck. But I don't want to tell anybody because they might think that I'm not as good a Christian, or I'm not a, a faithful father, or this, that, or the other thing. Some of you who are wealthy, and some of you are, some of you are really good at hiding your wealth, but your wealth is not yours completely. You've worked hard, but God says that the, the joy is in the giving. For the wealthy, you can have joy in saying, and some of you are extremely generous. I've seen it. 
I've been the recipient of extremely generous, wealthy people who care more about the kingdom of God and find joy in giving. It's better to give than to receive, Jesus says. But the one who's receiving, the one who is poor, the one who has a need, there's a joy in that because through one another, God provides for us. God is no less to providing for us because, you know, he gives through other people than he is if he were to just drop manna. God does not drop manna supernaturally to us. We can't just pray, God, provide for a meal uh, tonight because we don't know where we're, we're, we're going to have our next meal. He's not going to drop a tasty, you know, whatever is your favorite food right on the table there. It's, and not, it doesn't happen that way. But how God has provided for you is he's provided for you a family that you're a part of. The people of God have a responsibility to provide for not only the people of God within their community, but then for other people of God. And then in abundance of generosity and love, we provide for those who are in need, whether they're in the kingdom or not. Christians in history have been some of the most generous people in all of history. Hospitals, food banks, organizations, relief, because we know that it, it is not ours. And for the one who can receive it, the one who can receive it in humility, say, give us this day our daily bread. And if you are on the spectrum of the end where you are uh, in poverty, with great joy and with no pride in your heart, you can say, thank you for providing through my brothers and sisters who care for me. There are some who are able to uh, earn for themselves a good living, and there are others that are not. And that's just the way that the world is right now. Paul tells Timothy, a pastor, he says, listen, instruct those who are rich in the present age not to be arrogant or to set their hope on the uncertainty of wealth, but on God. Again, there's that dependence. Who richly provides us all things to enjoy. There's, there's the gift. Instruct them to do what is good. What is good? To love your neighbor. Uh, Hero Israel, the Lord your God. This is what the will is, to, to love justice, to do mercy. Instruct them to do what is good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and willing to share with those in need. Storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of what is truly life. When we pray, give us this day our daily bread. We are praying so much more than just that God would give us a muffin in the morning and some steak in the evening. What we're praying is, is that, God, I, I am dependent upon you, and because I know that I'm dependent upon you, I will be content with whatever you give. And in my contentment, if there's any overflow, Lord, may I be a generous, may I help provide daily bread for someone else, whether that's I send a check in this way, or I give a little extra, or I actually invite someone for a meal, or I provide meals. And then, God, may I, may I in humility, daily, over and over again, have this posture. Because Jesus says, when you pray, give us this day our daily bread. We need it every day. You are needy. I'm needy. And God has designed it that way so that we might posture ourselves in humility, that we're creatures. We need food. And we have to posture ourselves before him.